Welcome everybody, my name is Jim Rooney. I really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, this is one of a set of conversations about my father, Dan Rooney, and his approach to his professional life. I recently wrote a book called A Different Way to Win, Dan Rooney's Story from the Super Bowl to the Rooney Rule. And instead of just having me sit around and talk about him, I invited a few friends. So today I have with me Randy Grossman, Larry Brown, and Craig Bingham. Guys, it's so wonderful to have you here today. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> so if you take a minute and give us, you, you folks have each been successful in business in your own right. Can you, can you take a quick second and talk about your life after football? Randy, why don't we start with you? Um, so this is obviously not going by way of seniority, right? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, I would have started in that case. Uh, sure. <laughs> this is, this is uh, my 30th year in the financial services industry. Um, I do financial planning and, and portfolio management. Um, our firm is Wealth Management Strategies. Stayed in Pittsburgh after the Steelers um, because my only alternative was going back home to Philadelphia. And Why would you trade Pittsburgh, Philadelphia for Pittsburgh, right? So that's what I've been doing. Right. Larry, you want to jump in? Uh, yes, yes. Um, since I retired in 84, I've been in um, a franchisee in the restaurant industry. I started out with uh, Burger King in 84. And um, in 1990, um, we sold our uh, Burger Kings. And uh, I've been in Applebee's franchise since then. Craig, jump in. <laughs> yeah. Uh since my career ended back in, uh, what is it, 87, I've gotten into the construction supply, construction world, so to speak, supplying construction products as well as uh, doing the fire sprinkler installation and service. So, guys, I, I really appreciate that. And I wanted just to set that as a foundation. I want to talk about you know, corporate or organizational culture. And, you know, I think some of the standard definitions talk about, you know, behaviors, mindsets, attitudes as, as being sort of the core components of, of culture. And sometimes there's a statement, you know, this is our way of doing things. Certainly my father, you know, used the term Steelers way, you know, way before those folks up in New England hijacked the term. But, um, you know, what, what he was, talking about was, you know, how he and, and the management team that, you know, they put together built this beloved brand worldwide. And I always feel like the reason so many players come back and, and hopefully say good things about us or, or talk about enjoying their experience. We have fans all over the world is this idea of culture. So my first question, Craig, I'll, I'll let you start is, you know, is there anything today that you think about related to these elements of culture that you didn't, you didn't really notice back then, but really has impacted either your view of the Steelers and or how that has, has driven maybe some decisions you've made in your business life. Well, the, the way I operate business is based soundly on the Rooney operating principle and what I learned from watching Coach No and your dad and the chief and just how the organization operated as a whole. And the thing that always fascinated me, and I, I'm not sure how it was in other places, but when I've spoken with other players around the league, they had said, you know, they would play for a team, but for the most part, those guys would then go back somewhere else to live. And it always fascinated me that you would find guys from California and different parts of the States that ended up staying in Pittsburgh. And I think that was a testament to the program, the system here, as well as the people of Pittsburgh. So that in and of itself was, was fascinating. I'm from Connecticut and decided to stay here. Yep. Yep. Randy, how about you? Is there anything 30 years later now that, that uh, you say, wow, I, I wish I realized that back, uh, back then I might've been able to do more with it then. Well, I think, uh, I think the concept of culture is a, is a relatively newer concept that um, what, what culture is referring to now, um, back when uh, we were playing, was much more so um, personality. And um, organizations basically reflect the personality of, of, the, of management and the people at the top. 
and as Craig was mentioning, um, Coach No, your dad, um, your grandfather, um, their their personality basically infused the organiza- organization. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of, of, of talk now about uh, uh, mentoring. Well, you know, same thing. Mentoring wasn't uh, described as mentoring back back then. It was, it was more so role models, um, and the role models that we had as younger guys coming out of school, uh, for, you know, first you know, real job experience, um, we were tremendously fortunate with, with the folks that were here, uh, your grandfather, your dad, coaches that were here. Uh, and Craig also referenced the personality of Western Pennsylvania. Um, they've, they've all been tremendous positives for me. Larry, do you want to follow it up? I, I love the word personality. We we now use this word word culture, but but these things that that you know drive both our, our feelings, but how we use them in how we engage and relate to others, you know, within a work environment or a team environment. Yes, I'll do. Um, the culture <laughs> culture is going culture is there no matter what. And so you have to understand that because uh, your mode of operation and the way you conduct your business and uh, things that your employees see, um, those kind of things are a culture. And a culture can, uh, you can influence your culture uh, with all the values and the things that you think are essential to um, to motivating people and to um, um, create um an environment where people are understanding that they are uh, uh, pursuing their life um, ambitions and the things that they desire at the same time as the uh, organization is uh, um, advancing in, um, in, in, in conducting business. And so, uh, so it's important. It's important that you establish certain things that uh, convey that. Um, and so I, when you go back and you, I, I was with the Steelers for 14 years, that's a long time. <laughs> so a lot of things germinate, you know, you look at things and you see the things that are working and you see the kind of success that we're going, uh, that, that uh, we were experiencing. Um, and um, you pay attention, you see the kind of things that um, really makes a difference and you start to emulate those things. They start to germinate with you, start to emulate those things. And, um, and they were, um, uh, I think, obviously, when it, it really kind of starts with hiring, you know, when you when you're hiring, you make sure that you're hiring um, people that are uh, compatible philosophically with you and what you're trying to accomplish. And you try to get those things established. And, um, um, and, and you just make sure you infuse, infuse um, your operation with the values that you have that are that, are, um, that everybody understands that they have a stake in it and they're all benefiting from it, uh, for what you're asking them to do. Larry, I, I think that's such a perfect place for the next, you know, sort of direction I wanted to take this conversation. You know, one of the things I saw my father do so well was, was always, uh, you know, bring in different points of view, even if he knew sort of up front he was going to disagree with them. And, you know, that, that was challenging at times. It took an amount of discipline, an amount of sort of consistent empathy. Openness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Openness and um, open to, um, to ideas that may be a little bit different than yours. Open to ideas that you may not have occurred to you yet. <laughs> Those kind of things are, are very important to be open. And I really admire um uh, your your organization with you know starting with your grandfather your dad and and, and coach Noel I mean they really um, expanded um, their out their uh, search for talent I mean they were out um, recruiting in places and scouting in places that nobody else were doing and they were able to find some gems I think you got to be open minded. Your culture has to be has to reflect that. You have to um, be willing to um, change your mind or uh, change your thoughts about things. If somebody comes up with something that's compelling and that um, 
that uh, moves you to do that. And so some people are just so stuck in their ways or, uh, and not open to new ideas. And I think the more um, that you can open yourself up, I think it just makes you a stronger, a stronger company, um, fusing with, um, fusing your uh, ideas and thoughts with others that are, that are, are something that you may not have occurred to you yet. And so uh, we really believe in that. Randy, how about you on that? You know, did, did you see that that difference? And and uh, as I said, I I saw a lot of empathy and a lot of a lot of patience in allowing people to develop the personalities that that they may have started as a young person and and either grew or evolved in, in their time here. Well, you know, I found I, I found it interesting uh, your terminology in regards to tolerance. Um, um, <clears throat> There's definitely tolerance, but tolerance within expectations. Mm -hmm. Larry mentioned about being really open that, um, I mean, that that was a significant differentiator for the Steelers um, back when Larry and I and Craig were there. Um, You know, Larry referencing looking in places where where other folks weren't looking and identifying some really significant gems. Um, But... um, from the coaching staff side, it's basically being Chuck Knoll as, as the leader of it. Um, he, he was tremendously open in regards to um, getting the objective done. And it didn't really matter um, how it was done, but there was a laser focus on an outcome that was desired. Um, you know, I, I often think that, and I never had a chance to talk to him about it, and he probably wouldn't talk to me about it anyway, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I credit Chuck that um, his background, you know, being, you know, an undersized guy, offensive lineman, you know, ran plays in and out um, you know, for the Browns when he was there, um, I mean, he understood that you did not have to come looking like something. Uh, The counterpoint to the Steelers um, back then were the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, they were like a formula. Everybody had to look a certain way and, you know, be a certain, uh, come from a certain place. And, um, you know, Chuck's mindset was completely without boundary in that regard. I mean, (laughs) you know, I often mention it, you look at us, you know, from an individual player's perspective back then, it was like a freak show. I mean, we were strange looking. We had big guys, little guys, skinny guys. Um, I mean, we had a lot of guys that did not fit the quote mold. Um, you know, the mold from what kind of school they came from or, or all these different uh, check marks that you're supposed to check off. Um, I mean, the Steelers epitomized basically you know, getting the job done um, and with whatever kind of package you brought to the game. Um, I, I, I thought that was pretty significant to the team. Absolutely. And, and I, you know, both, both you folks mentioned what, what amounts to be Bill Nunn's work and, and, you know, the, the story that Bill talks about, you know, when he came to the Steelers is you know, my father invited him to lunch and he was criticizing the Steelers uh, for not doing enough, and my father hired him on the spot, and I think that that exemplifies so much of of what, what you you folks have pointed out. Can I yeah. can I throw something yeah, in real please, quick? As, as, yeah. as I see the book that's over your uh, left shoulder there. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, Larry and uh, Randy, if you guys haven't had a chance to read that book, I strongly suggest that you do. And what was kind of neat is as I'm listening to both of you guys talk about some different things in the the Steelers going beyond a certain level or outside of the box, so to speak, as Chuck used to say, think outside of the box. He brought to the Steelers the thought of going to HBCs, historically black colleges, and pulling guys in that ordinarily would not have gotten a chance to get a view from a lot of people. All of a sudden, that was a paradigm shift by you know, the Steelers going that route and picking – players from that those level of schools all of a sudden open things up for a lot of other players and teams starting to look that way and saying hey 
you know, these guys are having success. You look at the talent that that's there and what's coming out. We should be getting some of that. Randy alluded to the Cow- Dallas Cowboy way. And even those guys, you know, at some point said they started looking at historically black colleges to find talent there as well. So it, it's just fascinating how the Steelers, you know, were the leading edge, so to speak, on a lot of things as you move through the years of the National Football League. So thanks. And my publishers will send you the check for uh, the book. <laughs> So, hey, so the, the last the last piece I, I want to get your guys thought on is and it's funny because, you know, my father and, and all these folks, but really he and he and Chuck just had had this fantastic way of working together. And I think Chuck's statement really exemplifies how my father approached this term culture. And that was you never arrive. You know, my father didn't see culture as something that was static. It was something that every day. He went and attended to and you know it required resilience it required persistence it required consistency are those capacities that that you each have had to build for yourselves within your own businesses can you tell me a little bit about that and did the Steelers influence that Randy I think we're going to start with you on this one I, th- I, th- I think um, the, the drive that you're referencing in regards to your dad um, and Chuck um, very much permeated the system, um, definitely, definitely down to the player uh, level. That um, <laughs> Chuck was not Chuck was not much of a motivator, and actually, your dad, as quiet as he was, was not a you know rah rah motivator guy. Um, the um, you you had to come basically with your own motor. You, you had to be a, a very driven person um, to make the Steelers back then. Um, and that really reflects the personalities of Chuck and your dad. Um, you know, it's kind of, you know, which comes first, chicken or egg. But uh, um, I, mean, I, I think your dad's personality, as you described it, basically permeated the system. Um, yeah. Larry, you want to jump in? Uh, yes. Um, I, we, it, it almost has to be a part of any really successful um, um, company and organization is that you're trying to be better <laughs> today than you were yesterday, and you're working on being better tomorrow than you were today. We talk about this all the time. We talk about this all the time. And... Um, and, and, you know, um, you can talk to any of our people and they will, they will certainly reiterate what I'm talking about is that you never, you do never, you never arrive. You never arrive. You're either getting better or you're sliding back. Like we're in a restaurant business, you know, and I tell my people all the time, you know, I'm not paying you. <laughs> I don't pay your salary. The people who come in our restaurants are the ones who pay your salary. And so it doesn't help that if I walk in a restaurant, somebody treats me special or nice or whatever, who you treat nice is that person who comes in there with your tuition, with your mortgage payment, with uh, um, uh, whatever it is that you're working for in life that are coming in to, um, to help you reach your goals and ambitions. I think I, I remember after, um, you know, after one of our games, um, well, we were getting prepared for, I think, our, our, our first um, um, championship or, or um, well, anyway, we were going out to the Raiders. Um, they had played a game that everybody had seen, and uh, that was a really a fantastic game. They playing the Miami uh, uh, Dolphins, and it was, a, it was a great game. And uh, the uh, announcer said, wow, boy, I, you know, <laughs> you've seen the two best teams. <laughs> uh, and Chuck, the first thing he came in uh, the next day when we were preparing to play Oakland, Oakland happened to win that game, was that, you know, announcer got it wrong. <laughs> the best team is in this room. I think we all believed in that. And I think we all got motivation from that, that he believed in us and that uh, what he was teaching would work for us. And our trust was in that. And so you found a team that, you know, <laughs> that was, you know, ready to play and ready to win and ready to be champions. So, um, 
anyway, that's my take. Yeah. Craig, you always tell a story about you know, being with the Steelers, leaving and coming back. Uh, and, and I always think that, I, I hope, exemplifies some of the things we've, we've tried to do well. Uh, do you want to talk about that experience a little bit? Yeah, it was, you know, for whatever different reasons, I ended up being out of here for a bit. But the, the, being out in San Diego and being in training camp, and I'm walking across campus from the morning practice with a few other guys. We just finished practice and we, we saw a group of business people coming towards us and we were on this a narrow path. And I asked one of the guys, you know, who are those people? And, and they identified and said, you know, that's Spano's father, Spano's son. And those are the other business folks and so forth. And, and, I kind of kept my mouth shut and I wanted to see what happened. And as we approached them, the players kind of parted the Red Sea, so to speak, so that these big shots could keep walking. And I said to the guys after we walked a, a little bit further, and I said, here's the difference that I see right now between Pittsburgh and San Diego. I don't know about other teams, but I said, if, if that was Dan Rooney or – the chief or any of the, the Rooney family and they're walking towards us, we would have probably shook hands and there were, would have been introductions and we would have a brief conversation and we would move on. Those guys never stopped. And the fact that we had to move out of their way told me a lot about the caliber of people that we're dealing with. And at that point, I remember saying to somebody, I don't think I'm going to stay here that long. So it, it's it's a testament to the team. But Larry and Randy were talking about different ways that Chuck would motivate people. And I can recall one game we were playing Cleveland at Three River Stadium. And Clay Matthews Sr. was calling out a lot of the plays where they were going. And Chuck got pretty steamed. And, you know, he was just saying to every – I think it was at the halftime – and he came in and he said, I don't care if they have our playbook offensively or defensively. If you can't get the job done next week, I'll have somebody else in there for you. And we went out and beat Cleveland that game. But, you know, that was a form of motivation that plays. They had an idea of where the plays were going. But it was up to us to get the job done. And it's the same thing in life that whatever it is you're doing, uh, others may know what you're trying to accomplish but if you aren't self-motivated to get there then we'll just find somebody else to to put put in place and move on well guys this is uh this is the the end of our time i am uh grateful for you taking the time today um but i really appreciate your your thoughts on on sort of how we we tried to do things you know i i believe my father really tried to do things well. You don't always hit the mark, but I think it's it's over and over again. And seeing you guys, and, and I don't know that you always hear this from, from me or my brother, et cetera, not the, but, but I know we think about the fact that watching you folks be successful in the ways that you have, you know, is such a, such a, a testament to my father, to Coach Noel, um, you know, to, to what the organization tried to be about. You know, we want to win and we want the fans to enjoy winning. But there was always this aspect of, of I learned from those guys. It's about developing men into contributing to society as much as it is about winning football games. So absolutely, it's a pleasure to watch you guys. And, and I really appreciate you taking the time today. Thanks for the invite, Jim. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure being here with the chat.